guys, this is Young. Today I'm in this beautiful environment to give you guys crash course on how to maximize using Mavic Mini. Let's start. Before anything else, there are three things that I make sure I do. First, I increase the height of the return to home function. The default value is 30 meters and I changed it to about 60 meters. Next is I increase the cache value to maximum 16 gigabyte. Having a bigger cache storage can be useful just in case. For the grid line, it kind of depends on what you prefer. I do like having the middle cross. And right before the flight, just make sure that you check the transmissions because you can't do it when it's up in the air. And I forgot to do it just now and I got stuck with a bird. That was really scary. And I realized the O2 detection tends to select the signal that have the most interference. So it's probably best to change to manual. It's better if you go for 5.8 gigahertz. Make sure you select green colored stable signals. These are the maximum transmission distance that you get with different models. There are two types and I have C model. And now we move on to tips during flight time. You need to make sure that the RC is in line of sight with your drone. You can see it by looking at the bottom center. You want to have it at like zero degrees, which means you get the best direct signal possible. For me, if I fly the drone a little further, then I'd like to have map box open. Click on the map icon, then you actually can see exact flight trajectory on the GPS. It actually shows you like a direct line back to home point. And now we go on to taking videos. EV value is so simple to use. That kind of gives a simple solution for Mavic Mini not having the manual control. So in this kind of bright daylight, I actually want to keep it lower than zero. So maybe I'll go for like minus 0.3. And you can also auto exposure lock. So that exposure doesn't really change during your flight. And when you're flying, I love switching back and forth between Cine Smooth, Positioning and Sports Mode. For me, I use Cine Smooth, especially when I'm like landing in a place that's a little crowded. If I want to track myself with the manual control of RC, then I use Cine Smooth so that drone flies as slow as possible. If I want to follow something very speedy, then I go to Sports Mode. And also if I want to go quite a distance, then sports mode is recommended. However, Mavic Mini for some reason, it always gives this weird signal. Quack. On the gimbal, you can of course change between FPV and follow mode. Do make sure you check out my other video specifically on FPV gimbal mode. And don't forget that RC has these two buttons, the photo shutter as well as the video shutter. During the photo, you can sort of hide your hand just like what I'm doing now. And during quick show mode, what I do Three, is I actually put down two, the remote control one. sort of behind me so it's out of the sight. Quick shot program gives you three seconds before starting to take the video. So it's perfect for you to sort of get rid of the RC from the video. Now after the flight. And if you don't have enough battery, make sure you bring the extra pack. You can charge your Mavic Mini in between shots. And for the quick shot, if you really want to have fun with it, immediately put it on social media. What I would do is make sure you download the quick shot video while you have the DJI Fly app on. It will actually give you like the finished product of quick shot with music, with the speedy portion as well. I hope you found today's video pretty useful. I'll come back with more reviews on Mavic Mini because even though in the last video I said there's something that I hate about Mavic Mini, maybe I just need to get to know device better and try to use it within the limit. I mean, at the end of the day, it is much cheaper drone and also lighter drone than what we have in the market. So my journey continues with Mavic Mini. So please don't forget to subscribe and like this video and see you.